open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yo, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement. Broadcasting live this week from Sweetwater Brewing Company in Atlanta, and I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis, and this week we are talking to Sweetwater Brewing, as you might expect. We're also talking to the Giving Kitchen. We are here at the launch for Second Helping IPA. Yep. It is an annual release that Sweetwater brews in conjunction with the Giving Kitchen uh, to help raise funds. Yeah, and I believe it's uh, it's uh, one of several years they've had it. So they've had it for a few years now, and uh, always a good thing to drink. So speaking of drinking... Oh, this week uh, was pretty quick. We got a quick turnaround this week uh, from shows. So yeah, we've have, having to double down on our shows. But uh, so far this week, I've had second helping. Okay, that's good. How about you? Um, I've actually I'm having I haven't had second helping yet. I had it a few weeks ago. But uh, okay. this is their uh, Hatchery Series Five, uh, their Northeast IPA that's in your mix packs right now. So this is tasty stuff. I've heard good things about that. I've heard that hazy so IPAs are the thing that now. It's what, what the kids like. Soon. You know what? I did actually drink some beer since last week. I went to the. The preview media preview for New Realm Brewing. Oh, yeah, okay. And got to try uh, their Pilsner, and uh, their coffee porter had kicked just as I got in the door. That's I what I heard, a little yeah. Late, but, uh, you know, it's a gorgeous space, great facility to have here. Everybody there was excited, feeling good. Awesome place there on the Beltline, some good beers, and I missed the f- I had a piece of chocolate cake, a okay. little piece of chocolate okay. cake. I missed the other food, uh, but we're going to go back and uh, give that a shot. Yeah, it looks like a really nice uh, addition to the Atlanta craft Absolutely. beer scene. So, so Absolutely. Good stuff. There. So uh, let's, uh, speaking of beers and additions to the craft beer scene, let's check out this week's Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truck and Tap. Dot com. And obviously, the Truck and Tap sweet, uh, Beer of the Week is Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Yes. All things Sweetwater. We have the Second Helping. We have the Northeast IPA Hatchery Number 5. Uh, I'm told that there's a couple more one-offs or small batches on, on deck here today. I, I hear they make this try, thing. It's so. called uh, called 420. Have you I haven't heard of that. that. You haven't no, heard of that is one? Is it new? I think so. Yeah, okay. they might have just to come try out that with it. Yeah, you, you might want to so. see that one. That's a They've good one. They've got another one I saw up there called IPA. Oh, those Zippas. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. those, too. One. So we'll, yeah, give, we'll give that a shot. We'll check those out. Definitely, so. definitely. But it's all about Sweetwater this week. Aaron. It is. It is. It's and all about the Giving Kitchen. It's all about Sweetwater. We're going to drink their beers. We're going to talk about good stuff. Absolutely. We're going to do that uh, again, really, for the uh, for the rest of the show here. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get to Brian's headlines here in just a moment. But first, we should probably introduce our guests, uh, first of all. Uh, we idea. can do that. Yes. So we've got uh, Brian Schroeder from the Giving Kitchen. He's here. He's got the uh, Swell Sweetwater hat. How are you doing today? That's you? Yes. Yes. That's yes, me. you're doing yep. good. Exactly. I think we may need to get these guys headphones. I think I might have to. We so might yes. have to do that. And so. Steve Ferris is here as well from Sweetwater Brewing. Yes, Company. I am here. Excellent. So thanks again for joining joining us. Can't wait to talk about uh, some of your beers and uh, what's going on here with the Giving Kitchen. Uh, we'll do that here in just a few minutes. But first, let's go ahead and uh, kick it over to Brian Hewitt with Los Headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. Yeah, so Brian Hewitt is with us with the headlines. What's going on, Brian? So Six Bridges Brewing is coming to Johns Creek. It'll be Johns Creek's first brewery, and they're going to focus on IPAs, Saisons, and barrel-aged stouts. It'll be a full-production brewery, and it will inhabit a 12,000-square-foot space. CRL Contracting, friends of the show, will be involved in the design and the build-out, and no open date has been announced as of yet. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, some breweries and planning across uh, the, uh, Georgia and Alabama here later in the show. But, uh, you know, again, it just it just it's filling in the mass. We right. seem to talk about this every single week, but uh, but it's great to see. And that Six Bridges is working. They were originally Etowah River Brewing, going yeah. to be in Canton, but apparently some challenges there with getting things done the way they wanted to. So a little location move and a name change because there are a few other places coming up called Etowah. There's another Etowah Brewing Company. There's an Etowah Meadery. Meadery, right? Yeah, I that's believe. right. So Etowah was getting a little crowded there. Yeah, so. Yes, it was. 
Another big item in the news is Scofflaw is adding a former BrewDog and Founders executive as their partner. So it's beer industry veteran Chris McJunkin. He served as the chief revenue officer for BrewDog USA and did two and a half years as the vice president of sales for Founders Brewing Company. He's taking an equity position when he joins Scofflaw at the end of the first quarter. And plans the plan is for him to oversee sales and distribution and help Scofflaw grow its off-premise retail as it continues to expand the availability of their cans. So that's an interesting story. Yeah, I mean, they're growing like crazy. You know, they did the partnership with BrewDog for some contract brewing out of the Columbus, Ohio facility. So not surprising they'd connect up with somebody there. Yeah, and again, they're, they're in their third expansion in right. uh, just over a year. So, uh, so those guys are growing pretty big. They're definitely going to need some help. Growing that fast means growing pains, and you need some expertise to get you to that next turtle. So beer and spicy food is a natural pairing, but what beer do you think you would want to drink after biting into uh, like a blazing hot uh, Carolina Reaper hot wing. I, I'm going to go with a milk stout because milk is supposed to cut that. And so maybe that will help. I don't know. My choice is going to be don't eat Carolina Reaper wings. Well, there's that. So that's, that's so you guys option, are both so. spoil sports because IPA is typically the thing that people that's, think of when they, they go to wings. And believe it or not, that is actually the wrong way to go. Okay. Because the bitterness in the IPA combined with the, uh, the carbonation bubbles popping in your tongue, it actually exacerbates the irritation from the capsaicin in the, the, in the chili peppers. Huh. Okay. So Aaron is exactly right. He's, if you okay. can get a nitro milk stout, nice. if you need to, to, to calm it down with the hotness, the nitro milk stout's the way to go. The sugars in there and the smaller nitrogen bubbles are actually much easier on you than uh, than the traditional IPA. That sounds like blasphemy. I, I bet you'd get funny looks if you had a plate of chicken wings and a nitro milk stout, but it's just because they don't know. They just don't know. My thought is, is, is this is something that you can take in apply in reverse because if you have just mediocre wings that aren't hot enough go hit your ipa actually in your sour beers too because those kick it up a notch those really kind of cleanse the palate and let all that heat del- get right. delivered there they, right they, they okay. add to the effect of the capsaicin yeah. yes okay. i'm an ipa chicken wings guy myself so you know i, guess I would I'm just as well bucking the trend as it would be it's there's there's some loose rules out there of what may so. be best but it's pretty much just whatever you enjoy there Do you, you enjoy your ipa with your chicken wings? Unless they're the Carolina Reaper ones, yes, right. but I, I'm yes. not crazy enough to eat those. <laughs> That's so exactly, there you go. Yeah. That's it. I would say I'd, I want to try those, but I, I think I'd be too scared. I was going to say, have you it. tried? Have you put this no. theory to the test yet? No, I, 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 did it, I did it once when we had, there was like free wing day at the place that I go to, and <laughs> my son and I were there, and we're like, hey, what the heck? Because they're free, and uh, no. They got about one or two bites in, and we just <laughs> said, no, this is not I, I'm a medium wing guy. Yeah, me too. Give me a little, a little bit of spice and, and sizzle there, but that's about all I need. Got about time for uh, one last story, Brian. What's going on? All right. So Dogfish Head has unveiled what they're calling a survival beer. The, it, the name of the beer is the end of the wort as we know it. And it's a 9% ABV Belgian-style fruit ale that is, quote, chock full of amino acids, and micronutrients, and vitamins. Basically, if you can think of a superfood uh, that you could possibly eat, it's, in, it's most likely in this beer. And uh, so that includes blueberries, asahi, I think it, that's how you say it, goji berries, and even quinoa, like crazy stuff in it. Um, it's, uh, it comes in a 750 and it will sell for $45. So that all of wow. that okay. high-end food is expensive. But, but here, here I'm going I'm to take exception to that. If you're trying to survive out in the wilderness, having a bottle of 750 milliliter beer is not good. They need to can that. Yeah. It's easier to pack in and pack out, right? That's right. Exactly. That's a good point. Yeah. Or Capri Sun it, right? Oh, that's it. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Capri Sun it. Yeah. Yeah, a little, a little uh, Ziploc bag. Yeah. Yes. I've, seen the, I've seen that done in the jungle. Yeah. Um, so basically this... Uh, Did this, you say you've seen that done in the jungle? I have. Okay. I have. He's, got, he's actually, got lots of jungle <laughs> traveling experience. I've actually been in yes. jungle areas and seen the straw in the, the Ziploc bag before. All right. So it's an interesting <laughs> okay. thing. Um, it, it actually... The, the price sounds high but it also includes a solar blanket that wraps the bottle and a... Uh, check, for <laughs> yeah, check for $30? No, but you do get a Swiss Army knife okay. with the, uh, with the uh, Dogfish Head brand on it. Awesome. We'll have to pick that up so we can survive, Aaron. I think that's a good idea. There yeah. you go. You're listening to the Beer Guys radio show. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back right after this.
Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. We are located at Sweetwater Brewing Company today in Atlanta, Georgia, talking about the Giving Kitchen and about their partnership. Steve Ferris is here uh, from Sweetwater Brewing. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, Brian Shorter from the Giving Kitchen is also here with us, too. Hello, hello. We've got, we've got headphones. We've got microphones. We do. It's like Brian's watching. double duty in, man. He is, he is a man of many talents. He's the DJ and the rapper. That's right. Yes. That is it. So Great. we're here for the launch of a Second Helping. And uh, Steve's going to tell us about this. Steve, I know we're uh, a few years into this, at least, into the beer. And I got to sample it when they did the launch at Staple House and really like that version. So uh, kind of tell us about the beer itself. What is Second Helping? Awesome. Well, Second Helping is a collaboration beer that we created five years ago with Ryan Heidegger. Um, for those of you guys who don't know Ryan Heidinger, I'll, I'll let Brian uh, Schroeder talk into Ryan and, and the background of what the Giving Kitchen is. But Ryan came and met with us and sat down with Nick, our head brewer, Mark, our brewmaster, myself, and Freddie, and, uh, and Jen Heidinger was here as well. And we talked about, you know, creating a beer. We talked about developing something that could be a benefit for what they were creating with the Giving Kitchen. And we talked about... You know, Ryan's experience in the, in the hospitality and in the, in, the, in the culinary industry and, and, and really what he liked to drink and what we thought would be a great beer that we could use to not only celebrate what the Giving Kitchen was doing, but make something that the folks in the, in the industry would really appreciate. So we talked about different styles and we talked about, uh, obviously, IPAs. And, and this is five years ago, so that was a little bit early on when everything was going IPA, but, you know, something that Ryan brought to the table was something that was an interesting twist on it was juniper pears. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we were like, all right, great, let's do it. So we tested it out in our in Brew Your Cask Off, a festival we used to host here at Sweetwater, and put some juniper berries into an IPA, and we're like, wow, this is really great. And then we fine-tuned that recipe, and that became the recipe for Second Helping. Now, yeah. I know that I know juniper berries give. I know piney is one of the characters to that. But what else yeah. are you, from the juniper berries? What all did they contribute to the beer? Juniper berries give a nice, uh, you know, uh, overtone to the beer. A little bit of dryness to it. You know, it definitely gives uh, a little bit of uh, of that juniper fruit to it as well. But piney is is probably the, the predominant uh, flavor profile that juniper berries delivers to this beer. And you know, as we were as we were talking about it, and as we were talking about putting Putting the, that into it, and we're talking about where do we want to hit on an ABV level? You know, we want to make an IPA. You know, yeah, let's be a little bit aggressive with it, give it a big body. Let's let's kind of push seven percent, but you know what? Let's not go further than that because we want to make this something that people are going to have a second beer sure. of. And that was literally where Nick replied. He goes, "Yeah, like a second helping." Look, yeah, there you go. Boom. There you go. The done main, and done, right? Yeah. yeah. I know. Now, with Second Helping and the partnership with the Giving Kitchen, how does it contribute? Uh, what's the program with Second Helping with so, the Giving Kitchen? The whole concept with this was, you know, when we first heard about what the Giving Kitchen was, it was I, I was standing with Freddie, and we were at an event called Charlotte's Web. Um, girl who used to work at Fox Brothers Barbecue was a uh, it was a fundraiser for her. She had gotten breast cancer, and we're like, holy smokes. 
not only was the community coming together, but they created this fundraiser for her. And prior to the fundraiser even happening, she passed away. Wow. And that's where Jen and Ryan got on stage and said, hey, listen, here's what we're creating. Here's the outpouring of support for Ryan when he was diagnosed with cancer. And we want to do this for other people. And we want to create this lasting uh, organization for others in the hospitality industry that don't have the support network that we have. So talking with Freddie, was, you know, what can we do as a brewery? It was like, you know what, the best thing we can do and the, and the most impactful thing we can do is, is make a beer. But beyond that, of uh, getting a beer into people's hands so they understand what that message is, what that mission is, is let's give 100% of our profits to the beer. And not only is Sweetwater giving 100% of their profits, and have we given 100% of our profits over the last four years, we're going into year five now, we challenge our wholesaler, United Distributors, to do the same. And they said, yeah, 100%, we're in. Uh, Doug Hertz and David Schulberg, those guys have been huge supporters of the Giving Kitchen since day one themselves. And United overall as a, as a wholesaler is. So for both Sweetwater and United to donate 100% of our profits, every single dime that we make on this beer goes directly to the Giving Kitchen. Very cool. And uh, there's a lot of retailers that partner as well and do events yeah. throughout the season with that. Is that it's, correct? It's amazing. Yeah, retailers have really stepped up above and beyond anything that we would have expected. Our whole concept when we created this beer was, you know what, just buy it, just sell it. 100% of the profits are being donated, so your contribution is just buying the beer. And yeah. retailers, you know, far and wide, you know, this is Metro Atlanta, Athens, Columbus. Those guys have said, no, we're going to go above and beyond ourselves. We want to donate all of our profits, or we want to donate a buck of beer, or we want to donate uh, for an event, or create a beer dinner, or, or whatever it is that they've created. So it's, it's created this platform that other people have utilized to raise more funds for the Giving Kitchen. That's awesome. Now, Aaron, did you say that you haven't tried this yet? No, I have tried it. We went to the you Stable did. House. And, oh, uh, you were at yeah, the Stable House. That's actually, right. And, so. and you know what? I do want to give you credit about that, too, is because my wife went with me as well. Right. She hates right. IPAs. Absolutely hates them. Especially, the you know, I hate to say it, but the kind that you make, the West Coast, the good stuff that I love, you know, she's like, oh, get rid of this. But she enjoyed this because I think the Juniper really kind of tempered that bitterness a little bit and give it a little more of a sweeter finish, a little more easier drinking. And so uh, so congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, you made my wife much. an IPA drinker, which was uh, which <laughs> hey, is a tough task. Hey, one I person at a time. There I you go. I can relate to that. Yeah. You know, I agree with Eve on that one that, you know, I don't like the overly bitter, but uh, Sweetwater's never been just totally in your face. Yeah. Like Sweetwater IPA, none of that. But this one, you know, there's a little bit of malt in this. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you mentioned with the drying and the juniper berries and that, it's not, you know, it doesn't hang around on the palate. So you no, get a little bit of malt sweetness. You get a little bitterness there. Kind of cleans you off ready for the next uh, uh, the next sip there. Definitely. Now, Brian, uh, let's go ahead and get you bent to this conversation real quick. Um, we talked a little bit about with uh, with Steve about the Giving Kitchen, but since you're the Giving Kitchen guy, uh, can you give us a little bit more of a background on it and, and how this got started and, and got involved? Is that involved? your official title, Brian? Yeah, Giving Kitchen Guy. Okay. I like that. that I, think, I think it works. Hey, hey, exactly. Hey, guy. Hey, guy. Um, so, uh, as executive director of the Giving Kitchen. <laughs> I like Guy better, but that's okay. Yeah, I like okay. Guy better. Okay, we'll go with Guy. There you go. Um, so we provide emergency assistance to restaurant workers. And our our foundation story is a heartbreaker. I mean, there was a couple, uh, Jen and Ryan Heidegger, and they had the world by the tail. Um, they, were, they were successful, smart, beautiful people, very well connected in the restaurant industry, uh, on the verge of opening what would have been the next big restaurant in Atlanta. And he went through a phase of, you know, feeling sick. Uh, you know, even some of his friends and family around him, they could tell something was off. Uh, you know, he went to a trip from New York. He came back and, um, you know, just thought he had the flu and went to the doctor and found out he had terminal cancer. Wow. And it was a, a devastation for their family. And you know, this is really, to me, this is the story of redemption. Not redemption, but, you know, triumph over tragedy. Uh, his friends and family rallied around him and rallied around his cause. Uh, it, it started around a special event that we're going to host in January called Team Heidi, um, where they, which is going to be the sixth anniversary, um, they said, hey, Ryan, we want to we wanna raise some money for you. We want to make sure that as you, you know, have the, that you have the opportunity to, to fight, to, to work on uh, your treatment, and also to make sure that this battle that you're about to start doesn't bankrupt your family. And uh, so they had this fundraiser. Their goal was to raise $25,000. They raised almost $250,000. And in the aftermath of this incredibly successful fundraising event, uh, 
they sat back and said, as a family, as a team, what if we were able to do something else? What if we were able to start a nonprofit that uh, gave back to a restaurant community member like that Ryan was supported? And so the Giving Kitchen came out of Team Heidi. Uh, the Giving Kitchen t- came out of Ryan's uh, diagnosis. And it really it changed his life and it changed the lives of the people around him where uh, all of a sudden this cancer diagnosis became something that they could rally around. And, and we've gone from raising money to save one person's life to raising money, and now we've we have served over a thousand people with our grants program. It's awesome, Brian. We want to hear more and more about the Giving Kitchen, but we do need to take another quick break. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We are at Sweetwater Brewing for the launch of Second Helping IPA, and we're talking with the Giving Kitchen. We'll be back right after this. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. crlcontracting.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. What in tarnation? Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. And we are here at Sweetwater Brewing Company in Atlanta, Georgia, talking with Steve Ferris from Sweetwater Brewing. And, of course, Brian Schroeder. He is the man... The guy. The guy. The, the guy. guy. There you go. From Executive the Giving Kitchen. Director. Exactly. I just like, I like the guy. I like the guy, too. I want to be named the guy in a future life, and that's but, what I want to uh, do for my title. So, yeah. So, we're talking about the Giving Kitchen, about Sweetwater's uh, mission, and uh, the new IPA that they were uh, debuting today. And uh, you'll see it on shelf cans uh, pretty soon and on tap as well uh, across the metro Atlanta area and, and beyond, too. Is it distributing in Georgia? Yeah. Most of Georgia, it's uh, definitely Athens, Columbus, metro Atlanta. Uh, a little bit is going to sneak out into some other places, but... But, yeah, that's primarily where you're going to find it. Yeah, uh, Rome, Georgia, which is where I am from. Oh, There's like a little five, Rome. five different accounts that are keeping up Sweetwater. In there Rome, you go. Huh? Including Schroeder's New Deli, which is okay. the restaurant I grew up in. All right, nice. there you go. See, got to represent, right? Got to represent. That's right. Absolutely, man. So, Brian, we talked a little bit about the founding and kind of where the Giving Kitchen came out of. And I know that going into 2018, I've seen your new statement, uh, vision, mission, goals, and all that. You guys are really hunkering down, I guess, for 2018 and, and going into the future 2021 and uh, you have goals a few years out in that, correct? Yeah, absolutely. um, What is new for 2018 and what's changing or evolving with the Giving Kitchen? Uh, So, a couple big initiatives for us. One, we're expanding outside of the metro Atlanta area. Uh, We're really excited about moving to Columbus, Georgia. Um, You know, Athens and Atlanta are, are while they're very distinctly different, they the same, very familiar. Right. Columbus is a different city, okay. and this is an this is an opportunity for us to really you know stretch our wings, reach out to uh, a new community, and you know really it, it's an audience that, that we're going to have to sell our message. And so far, we found this is a community that is really ready and excited for the Giving Kitchen, which for us signals that there are many more cities and communities across the country that are willing to support and be a part of the Giving Kitchen family, which is something that we're really excited about. Um, Another big initiative for us is our safety net. So the Giving Kitchen, when we started, it was focused only on our grants program. So we're going to raise money and give money away. So if, if you break your ankle, if you have bronchitis, if you have a death in the family, you know, we'll raise money and then help to cover your living costs. One of the things that we discovered is that people who are in need don't just need the financial services, don't just need their rent or utilities paid. And and almost out of necessity, we were finding who's a mental health counselor, who's a dentist, who's a physician. And out of that necessity, we began to build a program that we call Safety Net that we're really taking to the next level in 2018. And this is a way for us to um, serve people without necessarily giving the dollar away. Mm-hmm but give the resources they need and provide immediate service and immediate care. Uh, So that no matter what, if someone picks up the phone, they call the Giving Kitchen, they email the Giving Kitchen, if they have a need, 
um, and they're in the restaurant community, we can help to match that through the through the network that we've helped to develop. You know, and this is something I wanted to mention. I should have kind of set up this, but if you're a regular listener of the show, you're wondering why we're not pounding beers and, and talking trash about brew houses and that. If you go out to a beer bar or you go out to a restaurant, if you dine out, if you drink out, the people that the Giving Kitchen helps are the people that are serving you. Exactly. The people that work in these exactly. places that you love to go. Yeah. So, and you got to remember, and, too, you know, this is a cash business. You know, right. they mostly work on tips. There, of course, there is that stipend, but, you know, very rarely do they get any sort of long-term benefits and those types of things. It's a cash, short-term And it's not industry. a highly compensated industry. Oh, and for a as a former people, server, yes, so, I can guarantee you so that's the case. So it's something that, yes. uh, you know, a small hiccup can put them months behind. Right. Well, how, many, big, well, how many servers do you know have a sick leave? Sure. Uh, or, oh, exactly. pay, or, or pay Benefit vacation. sick leave. Exactly. Yeah. That's, um, you know, I actually have a friend who was personally helped by the Gimme Kitchen. He was in a very bad car accident and couldn't work for, I believe it was almost a month that he couldn't work for. And, you know, uh, for someone, he's a he's a line cook mm-hmm. in a restaurant, and it's he didn't have a ton of money saved up to, one, cover his expenses from being injured and sick, and two, continuing covering regular living expenses during that. So he was he was helped by the Giving Kitchen, get through what have, yeah. would have been an extremely stressful and harder time for him. So. Yeah, and, and again, you talk about expanding into Columbus, but even here in Georgia, you know, in, L, in, uh, in Atlanta and in, in uh, Athens, you know, there's such a big tourist town, you know, we're such, we've known such a great food town, you know, a great bar town. We've got so many great restaurants around here. So, it, you know, the service community is, is very large and it's very important here. Well, and that's one of the things that I'll say is that restaurant workers are stubborn, um, <laughs> that is true. Then, and so the thing that I would say to you, we realized when we changed our mission, instead of saying, hey, you, apply for help, that wasn't getting anywhere with the restaurant community. Yeah. When we said, hey, you, get your brother, get your sister, help us take care of them, that's when the grant program and the safety net program, the Giving Kitchen, took off. Sure. Because, And that's what I would say to your listeners. You guys know when you when when your favorite server, your favorite waiter, your favorite the, the cook who you know in the kitchen, your friend who works in the restaurant industry, when they're down for the count, be an advocate for them. Let them know about the Giving Kitchen. Help them apply. That's one of my favorite things to see as the person who reviews almost all the grants that go out for the Giving Kitchen is when someone's in the hospital and it's their best friend who's applying for them. Yeah. Um, and that's what we want to really instill and encourage in this community is, hey, let the Giving Kitchen help to take care of each other. It, it is a brotherhood. It's a sisterhood. Uh, it really is a family. Uh, and, and let the Giving ki- Kitchen help to take care of each other. And with Second Helping, it means that we get to do more of that. I mean, you, we've given away about $1.5 million dollars Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that has come from second helping sales. Really, that's, that's a awesome. huge that's, percentage. That's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a big chunk. That's great to hear. So, now with some of the things that you know people run into, uh, you mentioned that you give resources not just financial but uh, mental health and education. That so it, it's not just solving. You're not putting a band aid on a problem. Right. You're looking to to help educate and help people move forward. Fully. That's right. So it's, it's wraparound services for the people who we've given money to, but it's also people who don't necessarily qualify for the grant services. It's the emergency assistance that they need, and it's it's the standard social service. You know, we go to different conferences. We, we make relationships in the nonprofit community, but we have people who are dentists, who are physicians, who come to us and say, I want to give back. I have a clinic. I will give on a sliding scale uh, dentist service or uh, family physician service uh, for men and women in the restaurant community. If they just say that they were the giving kitchen when they come into our office, and you know, we that's a program that we can grow uh, cumulatively. Um, Immediately. Yeah. And, pre- and then we're really excited about and it. And preventative care is so huge, too, because, again, they were talking about a nighttime industry when you're talking, you know, late nights and, and shifts works and you're working, you know, 40 hours is part time usually in the, in, the, in the restaurant industry. Most chefs that I know are working, you know, 80, 90, 100 hours a week uh, just to get things done. To get that preventative care, right. you know, that's something that's really important that needs to be done for all those people, too. Absolutely. So, yeah. sorry, so if people want to check into the resources, is all of this, like you mentioned, you know, get people involved, come out, get educated, learn all this. Uh, where would they go to do that? So givingkitchen.org is a great way. Um, one of This is one of the most fascinating parts. Again, it's, it's 
kind of out of necessity building these resources. Um, we have a Facebook page. It's a private Facebook group. Um, it's TGK uh, industry, TGK workers, TGK industry. Um, you have to ask to join, but it's about five, six, seven thousand people um, now who, if you need a job, if you um, are looking to employ some other people, if you have a question about industry practices um, that we help to facilitate, and you know, we every once in a while we have to be the catcher in the rye and uh, moderate this. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys. T- do Tim, you know, you know all about that. Don't you? <laughs> I know something about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's a huge resource that we provide um, as well. So that's a, that's one that's very organic. It's very social oriented. Um, go, th- you know, just Google or not Google, but Facebook search uh, TGK Restaurant Group, and then you know, go to our website, email us, call us. We're we want to be a, an emergency resource for every member of the restaurant community. And right now we serve the Metro Atlanta, Columbus, and Athens community, but we're growing. Our goal is to grow regionally in the next three years, and then after that, be a part of the restaurant community across our country. Awesome. That's great. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be launching a support campaign with Beer Guys Radio. We're working out the details now. Brian Schroeder, The Giving Kitchen, Steve Ferris, Sweetwater Brewing, thank you for what you do, and thank you for your time today. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a minute. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. Segment four already, and you know what? We had planned to bring in Bob Townsend from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution to talk beer, but unfortunately he had a prior commitment, had to take off early, so we're left to solo this. We can do this. We can absolutely we do this. We can do this. I think so. so. Absolutely. So we've got all kinds of stuff to talk about. There's always good stuff going on. One thing I want to mention is the beer we're sipping on right mm-hmm. now. So Second Self was nice enough, a beer they're launching this weekend, actually, Aaron. Yep. Uh, Triforce, which for the geeks and gamers out there is uh, inspired by the Legend of Zelda. Yep. And this is really good. This is really nice. So it's a little lighter. There's a, just a really light bitterness to it. Very fruity hops. Uh, tropical. I, I'll say this. I'm going to call Jason out a little bit. It says hazy on the can. Yep. I'm not getting a lot of haze, but uh, that doesn't bother me. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't Cause, bother cause haze me. Is not so, a flavor, so. But it includes power and courage and wisdom. It's so, like Rondo. It has electrolytes. Use, right. <laughs> this is what plants crave right That's here. Right. I think so. it is. Yeah. But this is good. The 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 Triforce Second Self Triforce IPA, very well done. Gets you some because it's really tasty. Yeah, it is. It is, and it's not as heavier as, as I thought it would be because it's got three different types of hops in it. I thought it was going to be a lot more hoppy, but uh, it's not. It's a nice, easy drinking beer. Um, they did a great job. I think yeah, this is really this one, one of my really favorites. Nice. I like this a lot. So, and you know, so. I'm not big on the the bitter IPAs. You are not. So. No. So but this one, I think, is a happy medium that if you're the juice head East Coast type mm-hmm. or you're the West Coast type, it kind of falls in, in between the two a little bit. There. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I also want to talk about, uh, again, we're doing a little radio magic here. By the way, we have been, we were a Sweetwater Brewing Company for most of it. We're actually here at a different location here for this last segment. So shout out to, to Monday Night Brewing. Brian and I will pre-game a little bit with some dust bunny before we uh, before we got on board, we'll look too. At that. So. It's quite nice. And I missed the pre-game due to traffic. That traffic is absolutely brutal. It was brutal. I have it never seen brutal. anything but it's as okay. bad as that. So. I'm here now. I got a beer in my hand. We're having a good time. Exactly. And you know what we're going to talk about, Aaron? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a few of the new breweries that are coming to Alabama and Georgia. There's a lot of them in the the future, which I'm excited about. 2018. There's there's a ton going on, and you know I keep a list. I can't keep up with all of them, but I do try and keep a list on Georgia. Mm -hmm. And even that is, is hard to keep up with. Just everything that's going on. We seem to hear about a new one. 
every few days, once a week coming up. Definitely. Uh, I did some searches the other day and found even more registered to come. So there's just a lot going on. But, yeah. Aaron, you mentioned a few coming up in Alabama. So why don't we chat a little bit about what's going on yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. And, again, again, there's so many breweries coming up. And, and we do apologize if we have missed yours. Let us know, uh, you know, at BeerGuys, at BeerGuysRadio.com, if you are a brewery that's in planning, too. So, again, no offense but we, if we missed you. But uh, here are some of the ones that we found. Uh, Cross-Eyed Owl in Decatur, Alabama. They're going to have some core offerings, including a porter, a red ale, Mexican. Mexican Lager, IPA, they're almost ready to open. In fact, it looks like they're going to be open right around February or so. So uh, that's going to be good uh, for folks in Decatur opening up uh, again pretty soon. Another one that's uh, going to be opening up pretty soon in Montgomery is uh, Common Bond Brewers. And they're going to be Montgomery's first production brewery. And some of the core beers, including a West Coast IPA, Malty Red Ale, and a Belgian Blonde. And... Uh, Brewmaster Andrew McNally, he's interested in the ke- chemistry of brewing, and he strives to brew some technically precise beers. And, again, they're opening soon, too. Yeah, so. that was something interesting I found looking mm-hmm. up some info, and very big on the science and chemistry side. Yeah. And that's something I think, you know, the the geeky types get into that because there's a nice mix of kind of artistic creativity and science and voodoo magic yes. in, in brewing beer. So. And, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we talk about that all the time. Folks do the water chemistry, you know, and it's just all about the ingredients and making it correct. So it seems a lot of people with chemistry – and engineering backgrounds uh, seem to get oh, into sure. a lot. Yeah, the precise absolutely. Uh, another one, uh, Birmingham, and uh, another brewery they're opening in June 2018 uh, is Birmingham District Brewing. And that's, uh, again, about 20 years of uh, brewing experience with the owners. And core beers are going to focus on the staples, IPA, Amber, Blondale, and an Irish Stout. And then a couple of ones that we've been talking about, especially this one here for a while, uh, Haint Blue and Mobile. Uh, they're going to be TBD. I know they've had some issues with uh, their legal processes and those types of things. So, uh, you know, they're still TBD, but uh, we did learn actually earlier last year what exactly Haint Blue was. We did. We got schooled, Aaron. We did. Because we mentioned it on the air when they first started planning. We did not know what Haint Blue was. No. So now we know. We do know now. And it's the blue there on the porches. The lightest blue that they use on the porches there. That's Haint Blue. And it's a southern Alabama tradition, and we call ourselves Southerners. We do, but uh, Atlanta gets you a little... Shielded from a little, the, the yeah, south. exactly. So, so we're yeah. not necessarily uh, that. You know, something I found really interesting with Haint Blue, they've registered as a B Corporation. You familiar with those? I, I am not, no. So I looked up some info on that because I wasn't either. B Corps stands for Benefit Corporation. Mm-hmm. And 33 states in the District of Columbia recognize B Corps. And there's rigorous standards for their for profit companies, but they have to make a positive impact in society, the workers, and the community around them. Interesting. So there's a big commitment for a company that recognizes registers as a B Corp to enrich everything they do, not just strictly for profit. So uh, there's a push. I think they said there's 900 B Corps in okay. the U.S. right now and more coming. So really interesting that they decided to, to go that route. Yeah, and they're in historic downtown uh, Mobile as well, too. So hopefully they'll have some, you know, the restore, restoration process going there and kind of keep and preserve the uh, the, the original uh, architecture in that uh, in, right. in the area. Absolutely. So, and uh, the last one I've got to also want to talk about is, uh, I'm going to totally butcher this name. It's the four segment after all. Siluria. Brewing, and that's not a slur. It's a slur. That is one. If you Sil- have been drinking, I sh- You can brewer. probably slur that a little bit and still get away with. That's it. That's true, actually. Yeah. So, but that's one in Alabaster. Again, uh, opening their TBD, and uh, they've got a tap house as well as a beer garden, and a small music venue planned. And their name comes from what used to be a cotton mill town in the area that is now a neighborhood right outside of Alabaster. So. Saluria Brewing. So that's, uh, again, a total of five new breweries in Alabama. And, again, if we missed you, no offense uh, intended, give us, a, give us an email at uh, beerguys at beerguysradio.com. You say if, but there's a good chance we did. Oh, I totally because agree. Because there's just so much Absolutely. going on out there. It's, it would be impossible for, to catch, for us just to catch them all. So uh, Georgia, over in Georgia, I know that I didn't catch them all because no. we don't have enough time to cover that. We are not good Pokemon But just masters. a few that we were going to kind of highlight here a little bit. Uh, Brian mentioned this one briefly in the news segment. Six Bridges Brewing coming to Johns Creek. As we mentioned, uh, we did do a little write-up on our website about them. Uh, but they're originally going to be Etowah River Brewing in Canton, moving to Johns Creek, opening as Six Bridges Brewing. The owner, Clint Gridley, plans to focus on fairly standard styles of beer. He said there'll be a lot of IPAs, but they'll use a huge variety of hops. Okay. And they'll do a lot of different style variations on the IPA. They'll be East Coast, West Coast, you know, everything in between. Nice. So you know, won't get boring with the range of hops and kind of variations you can do there. All the kids are coming up. 
that. new Hopsies Day, so it's all the kids good. are doing it. That's absolutely. It. Now, one that should be opening fairly soon, actually, a pair of uh, brew pubs that's coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is going to be Porter Pizza and Brewery, and that's going to be just off uh, Powers Ferry and 285 in Atlanta, and it is owned by a gentleman named Alan Porter. And okay. there's been a little bit of chatter online about the Porter Beer Bar here in Atlanta. There is no relation there. There's no there's no common ownership there. It's just Alan Porter. That's his last name. He wants to use it for his locations. And uh, the Pizza and Brewery, they're targeting opening. Actually, was targeting the January open. So uh, it looks like they are making good progress by looking at their Facebook posts and stuff. Uh, but they do plan to open soon there. Uh, they said they will have both a East Coast and North, or excuse me, Northeast and a West Coast IPA and a huge variety of styles that they'll do there. Just a big rotation of styles. Excellent. The Porter Barbecue and Brewery is going to be coming around in March. And same basic premise there. They'll be okay. doing a variety of styles, uh, kind of uh, rotating them out seasonal and stuff like that. Yes. So, and one that I'm pretty excited about because if you've been drinking beer here in Atlanta and Georgia for a while, you know the man behind this. You've drank his beers before at least. Uh, Halfway Crooks Brewing. And this is founded by Jorn Van Ginterachter. He's formerly of Three Taverns Brewery and also Shane, Sean Bainbridge and Tim Killick. Now, the brewery is going to be interested in the fact that it's, it's focused on an own premise. And that's something that's new here in Georgia as of September last year. Okay. You know, a brewery's been able to do that. They'll do 99% of their sales uh, at their brewery out of the tap room. So they said occasional distribution for festivals or special events. But for the most part, they plan to do all their sales right there at the tap room. You know, Yorn is really, uh, he really helped to take three taverns kind of the next level. The beers they'd done over there, you know, from Helm's Deep, Night on Ponce. Oh, yeah. Uh, all the Sour Asylum Series beers that they did there. So just to see what these guys can do with their own brewery. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, and it's going to be located there by the old Turner Field. Right. The state, uh, I think they call it Summer Hill. Is, okay. uh, the area or the development there, but that's down by the old Turner Field area. So cool. uh, we also have the Lost Druid Brewing Company, and this is another one that's going to be an own premise brewery that's coming to uh, Avondale Estates. So okay. you know, if you're not familiar with the area, Decaturish kind of gotcha. area, kind of down from that. And uh, the, as I mentioned, own premise sells there. They're going to have what they call a community centered tap room, and they will have shareable or small plate oriented kitchen there. Interesting. So a little food and beer going. You got to like there. that. So you know what's interesting about that is they were planning on opening up in Johns Creek, and they would have been the first in Johns Creek, and now they're Avondale. So we've oh, is that the lost yeah, it? They were going to go to Johns Creek? I did okay. a little yeah. research on that, and they've also teased a few beers that they're talking about pouring their Nimble Nimbus IPA, which is their ultra-juicy, hazy IPA, and uh, Bond Stout, their Cinnamon Bun Stout. So, so good. Yeah, they Cinnamon sound really good. Stout. Yeah, so the Lost Druid has now found a place, and it's, that's very good. There we go. They, they once were lost. But now but they're now still they're lost, fine. and they can be found in Avondale. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so. so, hey, time flies. We're having fun. It's time to wrap up this show, this episode of Beer Guys Radio. Uh, BeerGuysRadio.com is our website, uh, so don't forget to join us there and on the socials. Coming up next week, we are going to be talking to Macon Beer Company. They're going to be coming down from the uh, Central Georgia to talk uh, beer with us. Looking forward to that. In the meantime, again, check us out on the socials, BeerGuysRadio.com. That's my dog in the background. And don't forget to drink local. Cheers.